Greetings all, it's Blue Knight. Welcome back to the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Previously, we entered the Lanira Mine facility and got quite a ways in, a lot more than I would have expected. Today, we'll be continuing our adventure through this dungeon as we are far from done with it, let me tell you that, people. Well, at least that's what I remember. So, kicking off this episode, we got this really uh, uniquely laid out room. Huh? Now, like I said, we're going to be here for quite a while. At least we got quite a few things to do. Uh. So this might take up a big chunk of this early portion of the video. Uh. So bear with me on this. Uh. Okay, there's a blue ruby there, but if we go down there, there are spikes that will pop up. Uh. It's like a maze down uh, down the floor if you fall. And, that, and you'll eventually have to go back to that ladder that we, that we climbed on. It should be the right direction. Our objective is to get to that ladder that we see behind this block. Where to go next? I think I'm supposed to get to break this somehow. Not too sure on that. Are there any bombs come to think of it? Not from what I remember. I really hope I didn't get stuck early on, otherwise that would be quite embarrassing. Maybe I'm thinking of going in the wrong direction. I'm supposed to go... Yeah, I'm supposed to go this way. Uh, not that way. Because uh, we don't have the means necessary to bring down that boulder bear that we just saw. So I need you to go away, mister. Let's back off. I need you... Okay, just go over there. That's good. Very good. I had to break that anyway, so... That worked out a lot in the end. Uh. So one thing I didn't mention about the mining facility is that according to Skyward Sword lore, this place might have been a refinery for the time ship stones. It would make sense considering we really don't have a, a distinguishable source of where the stones have come from. So this would be a pretty good uh, candidate for where the stones have been manufactured. But before I go on to my second tip about this level, let's open this chest, because if I remember correctly... Yes, we get the dungeon item, the Gust Bellows. It is an ancient and mystical device capable of blowing an endless gust of wind. Feel the controls are out of alignment, just press down the D-pad to center them again. Some of you may be familiar with this item because it's used in Smash Brothers 4 as one of the new items of the series actually. Also it's gained quite the reputation in that uh, fan base for being very very broken for good reason if you've never played Smash 4 before. <laughs> Smash 4 before that's kind of uh, kind of funny. Anyway so stupid jokes aside I'll take out this rope first. As you can see the Gus bellows uh, well, just blow stuff away, but that's not all it would usually do. Uh, it was actually it decided at one point development that it would also suck things in as well as blow them out. Kind of like a, well, not like a vacuum of sorts. Uh, I guess kind of like the Poltergust from uh, from Luigi's Mansion, I guess. I'm not sure that's a good comparison on that. Uh, but it would have had the ability to suck things in as well as blow them out. Uh, as well as twisting the end uh, would actually make the wind blow even farther. And my final tidbit that I was going to talk about after or prior to getting this Gus Bellows is that the mining facility is actually, according to Anuma, Anuma his favorite dungeon in the game. Huh? I'm not really sure I see that yet, but then again, we haven't got through the whole dungeon, so my opinion or my memory is yet to be decided. I think there's one more thing I didn't mention about the Gust Bellows. So I'll have to look that up when we're got a cutscene of sorts. So we'll move this block in. And now we've got a way forward. But I don't think we have a way to open those gates yet. But we can interact with the small the small mountains of uh, of sand now. Let's drop down there. Alright, mister. Go away. I, I gotta patient again. That's a really bad habit on my little skills. Choo choo. Jeez. There are some things you never learn, I swear. 
Yeah, I can't do, can't do anything about that yet. Okay, I think we still have to be in this room. Uh, may have been thinking a bit too far ahead of, of myself. Uh, so let's blow this down. Oh, Amber Relic. But that's why I'm gonna activate a text box, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I should have used the hook to be able to pick it up instead. Oh well. Yeah, count it, game. Count it so we can move on with our lives, please. Yeah, it might be safe to go down there, actually, because we might be at the end of this room. So the other thing I wanted to point out about the Gus Bellows is that if you twist the bottom end, it would have made the wind blow further, but that idea was eventually scrapped. Another idea that didn't make it into the final product of the Gus Bellows is that, uh, is that if you would have twisted the mouth of this item, it would have adjusted the flow of the wind. Some pretty neat ideas that the developers thought about for this item, but I'm not sure why they didn't follow through with it. I think it might have been because uh, that the item might have been going on lines of being overpowered and being a bit too broken. So that's probably why they left it as is in the final product. Good ideas, but I guess I can understand them if they don't if they want to keep the item balanced. Well, balanced. Ooh, blue ruby, I want that. I'm trying to remember where to go next. I think we have to go through that door, but then again, that could be the entrance door I'm thinking of. I have made that mistake in the past of of confusing the various doors in this room. Another bad habit of mine when it comes to playing the Linear Mining Facility. Okay, be careful with these guys. Ooh, that was close. Was that what I got to the chest? Yes, it was. Okay, now I'm getting lost. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, hello there. Hmm, another special chest. Uh, I guess I forgot about that. We should pick that up while we can. Provided if we can. Uh, for these, uh... Unless these stupid spikes will get in our way. And so far, it seems to be the case. Yeah, there's no way to get over there very safely. I gotta climb on the boxes again. Ah, dang it. I probably already showed this off, but... You see the Gus Bells can deal with these folks a bit easier than use your slingshot. It gets blown near a wall-like surface, and they'll blow up. So that's a helpful tip to have in mind, especially if you deal with the folks. Well, I guess that only does apply to the folks. And there's that chest down there. I think this might be a small key, as that Araka is gonna be ready to pounce on me the minute I lit the screen. And it was a golden skull too, so I was completely wrong. Wow, like, I am very sorry for what's gonna happen. Oh, that guy didn't actually damage me. I thought he would, or at least latch onto me. I guess he just wasn't close enough. Dodge the bullet there, even though the Arakas are pretty weak. Well, they are very baby scorpions, so I guess that's not nothing to brag about. Okay, good news is, I got a lot farther than I thought before I got stumped. The bad news is, I'm stumped. I have no idea where to go next. Oh, hello there. Hmm, that switch might be very helpful. For reference sake, I'm in the second room of the Linear Mining Facility, so if you need a place to where you want, think, you think you should continue, that's where I am. But I think that switch, if my suspicions are right, should... Yes! Open that door. I had a feeling we have to come back here at some point to open that door, I just forgot about using the Gus Bellows here. So we're stumped no longer, we can finally make some more progress. Open that. Okay, this room might be a little tricky. I think I know how to deal with it. First, I want to clear up the sand so I know what kind of rewards we can get, if there are any. I need to rely on myself. I'll blow you away, Mr. Froke. This racket's gonna annoy me until I kill it, which I just did. Now we gotta run across the sink sand get to these platforms. Now that, that big pile of sand back there, that should be a time shift stone. There's no other reason that a, a pile of sand would be big like that. It's gotta cover something suspicious. Just simple deduction on my part, but then again I could be wrong. 
And when that happens, if that ever happens, I'll be made to look like a fool. Stupid Arachnids are more than more pests than anything. That's what they are. They're just pests. Like I said a lot, the Arrakis, they're not that big to deal with. Uh, even in swarms, they're they're just a uh, minor, minor annoyance. Uh, or major, depending on how you view them. Or at least how your experience goes. Come on, come on, make it, make it! Yes! Uh, avoid that Froak of the process. That's the big thing that I was worried about. Uh, blow this thing sand down. Uh, that Arrakis tried to surprise me. If you haven't told, if you couldn't tell right now, that happens quite a bit in this dungeon. But, like I said, Arrakis, never they're not that hard to deal with. But with the Time Shift Stone, we've altered the area's state once again, as well as we've got some new enemies. Uh, as well as some new mechanics to, uh, to, uh, use as well. Blow this little, uh, I guess, uh, wind wheel of sorts. Uh, and now use our gust spells to blow the pinwheel up here. Come on, blow it, Lanka. Blow it real good. There we go. Now we can move on and take on another Beemos. I think he's fight uh, Shield Bash again. Yes, it works. I guess I was very afraid that my reinforced shield wouldn't work against the Beemos, but I guess I was wrong. Maybe they're their uh, beams aren't really electrified, which is very surprising considering the enemies we've faced thus far have followed the theme of electricity, so why their beams don't really affect our shield too much? That's beyond me. And now we got this thing to deal with. Fi, I'm not calling for you, I just want to know what the enemy's uh, name is. Centrobe. The security drone was built in ancient times. It is armed with missiles fired from a central turret and flying bombs fired from both sides. Analysis suggests you can repel the missiles fired from the central turret with certain items at your dispos disposal, such as your shield. So we can actually use our shield against two enemies now. This is what I knew we could do right away. But the Beebos, that was still a pretty big surprise to me. So deflect the missile back at it once, but then I'll fire off those smaller bombs. Central bomb. This is a bomb projectile fired from a central, but it will follow its target anywhere, although a time fuse ensures it will explode after a set time. And that's about it. So this uh, central falls in two phases. First, just uh, reflect one of the missiles back, deal with the central bombs, then reflect the second missile, and it will blow up. And it will scatter some. Uh, very lucrative rupees, but most of the time we overpay like we just saw, so you won't be catching much of them, unfortunately. So if you're a man of riches, don't count on uh, going after the centrals when it comes to rupees too much. Now we have to blow this pinwheel back. It's like a pinwheel of sorts, but not really. We still have to use wind to uh, maneuver it. There. Okay, let's see, where to go next? Go up here? Hopefully I'm heading in the right direction. Ah, another Beemos. You, sir! Whoa, don't need to fire your beam at me. Just wanted to get friendly with my sword. A bit too friendly, which costs you your artificial life. Okay, I don't think we have anything else to do in this room. At least that's what I hope. Another pinwheel, we know what to do with this. Use our gut spells to blow it long enough so it opens the door. And that's been raised. Don't worry about the gates lowered back down, they won't do that. Once you lower them up or brace them, then they'll be raised forever. Unlike that door, which just immediately slot slammed down after our entry. More stalgers to deal with those, so nothing special. A simple shield bash, and cutting the heads off at the same time will work, Andrew. <laughs> not one by one, that's not how Hydras work. <laughs> at least as far as I know, I could be wrong about that. Okay, come on. There we go. And you're done. Oh, another red rupee. Nice. 
We have to deal with this... Uh, well, that's not a Beemos, actually. That's another new enemy we haven't faced yet. More Arrakas. Or at least just a Arrakas, but there could be more underneath these piles of sand. Ah, oh, there was right there. Speak of the devil. Speak of the really simple to beat devil. This probably could be another Arrakas, is it? Oh, no, it's a heart. Which I don't need right now because of that full, full health. But there was another Arrakas here. Nothing special, though. So we gotta move this crate to, uh, to that ledge up top. Push. Put those muscles to work, Link. You're fit for a reason. Well, the push crates, I guess. It's not really your complete life calling, as we're on a bit of an adventure right now. But at least you're putting your strength used to some for something. Just move up there, climb up. Ah, oh, another special chest. That better not be another treasure, it better be a small key. <laughs> that last one was kind of disappointing in my opinion. That's just another heart. Actually, I'm going to completely blow that away because compulsion, that's why. Gamer OCD, I blame that. You can deal with those Arakos, but I'd rather just blow them off. That term could be taken wrong in so many ways. <laughs> I gotta be careful what I say about the gust bellows, but then again, that's what it does at its core. It blows things away and not sucks them in like it was done originally. You know, there has to be a time shift storm out here somewhere so we can alter the state of this area. At least that's what I think there should be. I could be wrong. Uh, okay, I think we're supposed to blow so to the, through the gate. Ah, yes we are. Never to use our sleep shot once again. I thought I'd never have to use it in the facility, but uh, the game proved me wrong. Oh, we're actually at 20 minutes. I almost didn't realize that. Mm, mm, you know what? We're actually going to extend the time a little bit here. I'm going to deal with this guy first. Uh, just so we can end the episode on a bit of a high note. Uh, this is an Armos. Uh, the security and defense mechanism was developed long ago. It will attack anything that enters its security perimeter. According to my rec records, its weak point is its mouth, but it requires some specific measure to make it open its mouth. So I think Armos don't really operate on a perimeter like, uh, like mechanic or program of sorts. At least to my recollection. Then again, I've only played one other game in the Zelda series that only had that only had armos for me to deal with. That was Ocarina of Time. At least in my recollection. I'm not sure if their armos is Wind Winker. I don't really remember for sure. But to Fi's tip, you have to deal with one. Take that out and poke it, poke it. No, dang it. So you saw there's two weak points. We have to open the mouth with Gus Bellows. And then dab one of them, dab one of those gems, and then slice the other one. Which I'm not doing a good job of right now. Hey, you're outside your perimeter, buddy. That's supposed to be outside your perimeter. Yeah, go back there like a good Armos. That's a bad Armos. Very, very bad Armos. Obey your perimeter programming. I'm a lot more trouble with this guy than I usually do. Dab. There we go. That raised the door. Does that race the other door? Yes, it does. Good. I was a bit worried about that, not gonna lie. So now we can enter through that, through that door that we opened, but I want to get to this chest first. I swear to Lanayru, if this is a small chest or small treasure, I'm gonna scream. Oh, good, it's the dungeon map. That beats the treasure by like threefold or something. It's much better than a treasure, I'll say that much. And we actually don't have that much to go through. That's surprising, actually. I don't remember the the, the facility being uh, well this much left over, but we still got quite a few chests to uh, open, so we still got some time to deal with this facility with. Uh, but in any case, that's gonna end this episode of Skyward Sword for today. So next time on The Legend of Zelda: Skyward Sword. We'll be going through this door as we continue our adventure through the Lanayru Mining Facility. Until we meet again, everyone, farewell for now. <laughs>